What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Zebn. It's so good to see you on this nice Sunday morning. Uh, good morning to you, and uh, thank you for tuning in early uh, to our um, Sunday morning virtual experience. I'm, I'm glad to be with you. Cannot wait to share a very powerful word with you that I know is going to bless you in a tremendous way. Um, so as you come in the room, I see people already starting to say good morning, good morning to all of you. Thank you so very kindly. As you come into the room, make sure you say good morning as soon as you come in. Uh, it is rude to come to church, even if it's virtual church and not say good morning. And so make sure you say good morning as you come into the room. And uh, listen, I'm so excited to have you with us. I wanna walk through the channels quickly. Uh, got a very short program and then gonna get right into the word. I'm doing uh, the, the declaration this morning and gonna get into right into this, this powerful message that I believe will bless you uh, in a very practical way. And so I'm excited to be here with you. Uh, do me a favor, uh, if you're on Facebook, um, make sure you hit that like love button uh, and then I want you to hit that tag button and I want you to share this video with five people quickly. Would you do that? Good morning to you, Facebook. It's good to see you virtually and uh, certainly praying that God has been blessing you all week long. That You've had a phenomenal um, week and weekend uh, and that it has been a blessed one and a productive one. And it is so good to see you uh, in the virtual space. Make sure you, you again say good morning. Say good morning in the virtual uh, chat line. Make sure you say good morning. And then I need you to hit that love button. Facebook. So if I've got 80 viewers on Facebook, I need to see 80 likes or loves. Uh, I want you to hit that like love button. And then I want you to hit that ad symbol and invite somebody to church. Yes, you need to invite somebody to church right now. Tell them to tune in for a powerful word. It's going to bless them um, and uh, it's going to be practical in a way that they understand. And so hit that like love button. I want you to tag um, hit that ad symbol tag five people. Tell them to tune in this morning and, uh, and we can't wait to see them. All right. Would you do that? Uh, thank you so very much. Instagram, good morning to you. I see uh, several of you inviting people already. Uh, Latanya's on a roll this morning. I appreciate that. Uh, make sure you um, Instagram when you come into the room, say good morning. Uh, and then do me a favor, hit that heart button. Let me see some hearts flying up the screen. Let me know that you're tuned in. Uh, and then I want you to hit the at symbol. Invite five people quickly. Tell them to tune in. We've got a very short program. Uh, Sister Swan, it was totally my fault. Um, <laughs> Uh, not sending you the link this morning, but it's that's no worries. It actually works out well. I'm going to get right into the declaration and then we're going to get right into the word this morning. So hit that at symbol, tag five people. Let's get going this morning. It's going to be powerful. All right. So Instagram, good morning to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I know Instagram is our late church. And so they'll be on in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes uh, when I'm right in the middle of teaching. Uh, but we're going to get going this morning. Uh, Twitter, Periscope, good morning to you. It's good to see you virtually. Uh, if you would do me a favor, hit that um, heart button and hold it down. I love to see the hearts flying up the screen on Periscope. It's it's just a wonderful uh, app. Hit that heart symbol or heart button and let's see hearts flying up. And then if you're on Periscope, I want you to hit that ad symbol and tag five of your Twitter friends and followers and tell them to tune in this morning. Uh, this will be a powerful message and I can't wait to share it. And uh, I hope it blesses you as much as it has been uh, a blessing to me. It was a blessing to me put, uh, putting together. All right. So thank you, Twitter, Periscope, for tuning in. And finally, YouTube. I know there's a lot of channels to go through, y'all. This takes a lot of time. <laughs> but YouTube, good morning to you. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you hit that love button. Hit that subscribe button. I'm sorry, hit the like button. Hit that subscribe button. You should see it right in your lower right-hand corner. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Uh, and then do me a favor. Share this link with five people and tell them to tune in. Thank you so much to all of you that are subscribing to our YouTube channel, that have been subscribing to our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, in case you do not know, uh, you can actually go back and you can review all of our videos, the entire archive of our videos, going all the way back to last March and, and even some before then, uh, where we did some light streaming uh, before the pandemic. And so if you ever wanna catch any of our replays, just go to YouTube, if you wanna binge watch, uh, it's a great thing to do. I even do it sometimes when I'm walking or I'm exercising and I think you'll enjoy it. So YouTube, good morning to you. All right. I've gone through all of the networks. Um, I've really got to get into the word today and I'm excited to get into the word. Let's do the declaration. All right. Pastor's doing it. One man show today. Uh, let's do the declaration. Let's get right into it. And uh, I want you, uh, as I go through the declaration, I want you to say the declaration with me. And this is very important. Uh, as we do the declaration every Sunday, it is really not for us to just sit here and read words. Remember, uh, the power of your life and even your death is attached to what you say. And so declarations are powerful. Uh, we are now in the month of March. We'll be in the month of April really soon. And so I even hope you have not forgotten 
about all of your affirmations and declarations that you have written at the beginning of the year. See, people at this time of the year tend to start falling off. Um, the, the weather's changing, it's getting warmer outside and people tend to forget about all the goals they set in January, right? All the vision boards you set. I just concluded a workout tape um, Friday uh, and um, I've lost 14 more pounds. And so I don't think I need to go any further than where I am or I might disappear. Now, this is literally the eight, the weight that I've had that I weighed right around 23, 24 years old. Uh, and so I feel great. Um, and but, but what was more satisfying is the fact um, that I did not let go of this goal um, when January and New Year's went away. And people get let go of their goals and visions when you get into the year. And I'm here to tell you, as the year progresses, you've got to get stronger into your goal setting. You've got to get stronger into your goal reaching. You've got to get stronger into going after the things that you want and desire. And so um, I'm just telling you, um, it passes fine. I, I, tell, I feel great. You know, I told somebody yesterday, I can't wait to take off my shirt. <laughs> Uh, at somebody's beat somewhere. It's just going to be a beautiful sight in Jesus name. Amen. Uh, and so uh, I, I passed this put in the work, but but catch the point. And the greater point is you know, everybody sets a goal at the beginning of the year. By April, we forget about the goal we set. And so you've got to stick, uh, set a goal. you got to stick to it. you got to do whatever it takes uh, every single day to remain hungry and go after your goals and go after the things that you desire. All right. So enough of my soapbox. Let's get into the declaration. And when I'm saying this, I'm going to read this slow because I want you to be repeating it with me. So if you hear me pausing, it is your opportunity to catch up with me. That's called responsive reading. And so I want to go through this and I need you to repeat this with me. Uh, and I promise you, it's going to be a blessing to you. I, I love the declaration and so excited to do it this morning. All right. Are you ready? Say it with me. Restore. We declare that everything that is broken lost, hurt, or destroyed that belongs to us and has been designed by God is restored. My faith is restored. My joy is restored. My mind is restored. Even my lost time is restored. I am no longer broken. The fact that I'm alive means I have another chance. My faith has restored me, and right now, his love is making me whole. Evangelize. We declare that God helped us so we can help somebody else. He loved me when I was unlovable. He changed me when I was a mess. His love lifted me when I was down. I'm not perfect, but I'm free. And anything that came for me can't keep me. Because I'm free, my circle is next. My family is saved. My friends are blessed. My plans are successful. My goals are ahead of schedule. And anything connected to me is blessed just like me. Hope, we declare that everything that is missing is not lost. In Jesus, I have hope and this hope makes me confident. It doesn't matter what happens to me or around me, I'm going to win. My relationships are winning. My goals are winning. My family is winning. My neighbor is winning. This city will win. And my row has the victory. My past is defeated. And my future is brighter today than it was yesterday. Alternatives. We declare that God made us different. I'm a royal child, the light of the world, and the hope of my city. I respect the past, but I don't look like what I've been through. I love the church, 
and my life is balanced. I love coming to church, but I like flights, boats, and vacations. My whole life is blessed. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am a lender, not a borrower. And every place I go belongs to me. I do believe it, Elder Misty. <laughs> Breakthrough, say it with me. We declare that God has a breakthrough with our name on it. I have some challenges, but I am not defeated. No weapon formed against me can prosper. And I know that all things are working for my good. Things are not breaking down. They are about to break through. There is a breakthrough in my career. There is a breakthrough in my home. There is a breakthrough in my health. There is a breakthrough in my finances. I am here on purpose, for a purpose, and everything that went wrong is getting ready to turn around. Listen, did you read the declaration with me? I tried to go slow to give you time. Did you read the declaration with me? I hope you didn't just sit there on your couch and sit there at your breakfast table and not read it. I hope you read that declaration with me and it really seeped into your spirit this morning. If you did, I want you to type in the comments right now. It's already done. Can you do that for me? Type it in the comments now. It's already done. As you're liking, as you're sharing this video, I want you to type in the comments right now. It's already done. I he, I'm, I came to tell you this morning that there is a breakthrough with your name on it. There is a literal miracle with your name on it. And all you got to do is just believe it. God's turning some things around for you. He's working some things out in your favor. He's shifting some things for your benefit. And you got one simple job. All you got to do is believe that it's already done. Come on, type it in the comments quickly. I need you to tag somebody you have not invited to church yet. Hit that at symbol and say at such and such, it's already done. At so and so, it's already done. You're going to invite somebody to church by letting them know that there's a breakthrough on the other side. Let them know it's already done. I'm excited. I'm ready to get into the word. And uh, let me get myself, let me get my notes. Here we are um, today. I am talking from the subject, move out of the way. Let's get into it. I want you to type in the comments. Now put the subject. After you say it's already done, what you put in the comments, have you tagged five people, invite them to church? What you put in the comments right now, move out of the way. That's what we're going to talk about today. And uh, this is going to be a powerful message. Uh, this is going to be a very practical, but a very powerful message. And uh, I'm excited to teach this to you today and uh, certainly pray um, that you are prepared to receive the word um, that's getting ready to come your way. It's going to be life changing. Come on, hit that ad symbol tag five people quickly. Today, we're talking from the subject, move out of the way. And I'm going to be in Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse three through seven. This is the New Living Translation. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse three through seven is where I'm going to be today. And um I'm going to deal with something that I think is going to bless you, um, that is probably going to unlock some things into your life. And uh, and I'm excited to, to, to deal with this today. All right. So let's look at this. The, the whole idea behind today's message is really this notion of letting go and letting God do what he wants to do in your life. Now, I'm going to start there. That's that's the that's the end game. That's the whole point of the message. I'm going to start there and I'm going to walk my, myself all the way back and then we're going to pick up in 2 Chronicles and we're going to get going. But but the context of this entire chapter, the context of the entire chapter, 2 Chronicles chapter 15 is an Israel who attempted to try to fix everything themselves. Okay, the context of the, this entire chapter 
is an Israel that attempted during this time to try to fix everything themselves. Every time they had an issue, every time they had a challenge, every time they had an obstacle, every time they had something that came their way that was seemingly bigger than what they were, who they were, Israel's natural response was to try to fix it themselves. I want to say this to you, and this is your first PowerPoint. I want you to put it in the comments now. Despite the television show, despite what you may have heard on Oprah, your job has never been to fix your life. Your job has never been to fix your life. It hasn't. I know that sounds counterintuitive to many of the things that you've heard, but your job is not to fix your life because I don't care how strong you are. There are aspects of your life you will never be able to fix. There are aspects of your life you will never be able to control. And this is especially important when it comes to situations that involve other people. This is this is where we mess up. We attempt to fix our life and in the process, try to fix people so that it fixes our lives. And one of the major reasons why you can't fix your life in a very simple and basic way to understand is because you can't fix people. You can't change people. You can't fix people. You can't move people. You can't do it. So it's counterintuitive, I know, but hear me out. You, your job has never been to fix your life, regardless of how strong you are, regardless of how wise you are, regardless of how much stamina you have. Your job is not to fix your life. Your job is to know what you want. Here we go. Know what you desire and then fix you. Your job is to know what you want, know what you desire, you set that and then you fix you. Because the reality is you will get further in your life trying to fix you than you will ever get trying to fix other people. You will get further in your life trying to fix you than you will ever get trying to fix, fix situations and circumstances. You will get further in your life trying to fix you than you will trying to fix outcomes. When you try and focus all of your efforts on outcomes, instead of focusing that effort on fixing you, you end up in a place called burnout. Let me give you the formula again for burnout. The formula for burnout is attempting to focus your energy on an outcome instead of placing that same energy on yourself. That's burnout. Many of you have burned out in your career search because you have placed more energy, watch, in applying on, you place more energy on applying to jobs than you have bettering yourself. See how practical this is? You have placed more energy in trying to get promoted than reading every single day to get better in your craft and in your career so that you are prepared for that moment of promotion when it shows up. You have burned yourself out trying to fix relationships, here we go, by trying to fix the people instead of taking a step back and fixing yourself. Because I'm here to tell you, when you don't do it, you get burned out trying to fix situations, trying to fix relationships, trying to fix careers. You get burned out trying to fix all of this stuff when you focus on the outcome and you don't focus on yourself. And so we've got to understand this. 
This is so very important. And this was really the plight of Israel because the reality is Israel would find themselves in a rut and their response to being in a rut was never to focus on them, but it was always to try to focus on the outcome. And in doing so, they found themselves in cycles of frustration. My friends, you will find yourself in cycles of frustration when you spend so much more of your energy trying to fix outcomes and not focusing on fixing yourself and not focusing on bettering yourself. Listen, you want a better career? Gain more skills for yourself. You want better relationships? Work on loving yourself more. You want better friendships and connections with people? Learn how to appreciate yourself more. See, we focus so much time on outcomes that in the process, we end up losing ourselves. And anytime you lose yourself going after an outcome, you end up in a place called burnout. And Israel was consistently in cycles of frustration and burnout because they kept going after things instead of really looking inward and saying, why am I in the situation that I'm in? What can I do to get better in the situation that I'm in and come out of this situation that I'm in, right? And so you will always screw up your momentum Momentum is a very powerful thing. I, I think I've explained this before. It's been heavy on my mind because it's 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 a, a chapter in, in my book that I really spend some good time talking about. But momentum is nothing more than built up energy that's going in one direction or the other. And what we end up doing is we end up screwing up our momentum, a blessing. When we try to fix our circumstances, that there, there is a momentum of blessings and breakthroughs and open doors and made ways and manifested promises that wants to invade your life. But what you have to do in order to receive it is get out of the way of the momentum and recognize that the best way to receive everything that's coming to you is not to focus on what's coming, but to focus on you. You know, have you ever, um, I laugh at my kids a lot because one of, one, of one of the things I've learned with my kids uh, when I'm talking to them and it's something I'm going to do for them. One of the things I've learned with my children is I can't tell them what I'm about to do for them. And, and I, I want to try to make this make sense. I can't tell my children what I'm about to do for them. All right. The reason I can't tell Giselle and four what I'm about to do for them. Is because the minute I tell them what I'm about to do, then from the point that I told them until the time that I do it, they literally ask me 300 times, Daddy, when you gonna do it? When you gonna do what you said you're gonna do? When you gonna buy what you said you were gonna buy? When you gonna take us where you said you're gonna take us? When you gonna do all of this stuff that you said you're gonna do? And so I learned a simple trick through just parenting my kids that when it comes to them, you don't tell children what you're going to do for them well in advance of doing it because they're going to ask you every single day, when is it coming? God functions the same way. See, many of us have reached a place of burnout and frustration because we know what we want. But the problem is after setting in our minds what we want and what we desire, we continue to hold on to that. And we do things like, God, when is it coming? God, when is the promotion coming? God, when is the marriage coming? God, when are financial day, when are, when are the days of financial freedom coming? When, when am I going to get an open door in my finances? When is my healing coming? When is my family going to be saved? When, when am I going to get a new job? When am I going to be able to relocate? When am I going to get a new man? When am I going to get a new woman? When am I going to get a better relationship? You, you keep at, and what you don't realize is, you're asking for it over and over and over again. Doesn't mean it ain't coming. But what it does do 
is it delays its coming because your focus is on the outcome and not what you need to be doing while you're waiting on what you asked for. See, I taught Giselle in four that when you, if I say to you, right, I've remodeled their rooms. When I say to you, listen, I'm going to remodel your room and I'm going to do some things in your room. I'm going to add this to your room. Oh, that's great, Daddy. I can't wait. When are we going to get it? When is it going to come? Blah, 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 blah. It's coming, but this is what I need you to do in the meantime. While you're waiting on me to do that for you, go keep your current room clean. While you're waiting on me to finish, while you are waiting on me to finish remodeling your new room, take the current room that you and your brother had together, Giselle and Ford, or Ford, take the current room that you and your sister had together and y'all make sure that room is clean. Keep all the stuff off the floor. Make sure your clothes are in that closet and they're folded appropriately. Do all of that. Because while you're waiting on me to fix what I told you I'm going to do for you, the best thing you can do to prepare for what's coming is to take care of where you are. That's a whole word. I want you to type it. Are y'all ready? The best thing you can do to prepare for what's coming in your life is to prepare where you are. The best thing you can do, and this applies to anything, relationships, careers, blessings you pray for, healing you pray for, you praying and asking God to heal you, heal you, you know the healing's coming, he's a healing God. The best thing you can do right now is take your blood pressure medicine, stop stressing out, and stop eating hog jaws. Take care of right now while you're waiting on what's coming. The best thing you can do, y'all not listening to me, the best thing you can do to prepare for what's coming in your life is to prepare where you are right now. You want better relationships? Some of you desire, it's getting ready to get hot out here. And you know, some of y'all gonna lose your everlasting mind. You want relationships, you want all of this stuff. Let me tell you something. It don't even matter who God sends you if you don't take this moment of being single to prepare yourself. Because he can send you the best relationship since, since sliced bread. But if you don't take a moment to prepare yourself right now, you will take what he gives you and you will completely ruin it. And some of you, let me show you how God, smart God is. Some of you have not, God has not sent you who you desire, what you desire, because he knows you ain't spent no time working on you. Some of you, he knows he, he has not sent you the dream relationship, the dream job. He hasn't sent you these dreamy things because he knows you ain't spent no time working on who you are right now. So the best thing you can do to prepare for what's coming is not to focus on the lack of it. I don't have the relationship. I don't have the career. I don't have. Don't do that. That's what Israel used to do. Israel used to always focus on what they didn't have and what God wasn't doing and where they were and, and how bad things were. The problem was the way to turn that situation around was real simple. Israel had to start to then turn around and look inward and say, what am I doing right now to best position me to receive what it is I'm expecting down the road? Are y'all listening to me? You ain't receiving not because you're not blessed. You're not receiving because you ain't prepared. I'm going to say it again. Many of you are not receiving in your life, not because you're not blessed. Many of you are not receiving because you just ain't prepared. The reality is you want a mansion with an apartment mentality. You want a marriage with a whole season mentality. And the fact is, God can never give you what you want until you prepare for it right where you are. Are y'all listening to the old man? God can never give you what you want until you prepare for it for real right where you are. This is Israel's challenge. Now, let's get into it. Second Chronicles <laughs> chapter 15, verse three through four. Let me show you something. I'm gonna walk you through these, these things and I'm gonna talk about how really moving out of the way Getting out of your own way is really the key to receiving everything that you, you want for your life. It's real simple. It's a simple formula that, that, that really hit me 
in a major way a few weeks ago. And that is you are your biggest obstacle to what it is that you want. You are. It's nobody else. You're your biggest obstacle. So you got to understand that sometimes in order to get what you want, you got to remove the obstacle, which is you. You got to get out of the way. Right. Look at this. Let's watch this. Second Chronicles, chapter 15, verse three through four. Watch this. New Living Translation says this. For a long time, Israel was without a true God, was without the true God. I'm sorry. Without a priest to teach them and without the law to instruct them. Verse four, but whenever, this is important, but whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and saw him out, they found him. I want you to record this. I'm going to make it make sense. Our lack of direction is often a lack of acceptance. I'm going to explain. Our lack of direction in our lives is often a lack of acceptance. Our lack of direction, when it comes to our lives, our lack of direction is often a lack of acceptance. I'm gonna explain this. One of the most common prayers that I receive from members, non-members, people that um, reach out to me, uh, one of the, the, the most common prayers or desires that I receive from people that I coach, coaching clients is, you know, Pastor Tally, Dr. Tally, I need some direction. How do I know what my direction is? I, I need to know what, what the path is. And um, here's the problem. Oftentimes, we are unable to find direction because we have not accepted the reality of where we are. The very first step to accepting direction in your life is acknowledging where you are. It is being honest, transparent, and authentic about where you are. Let me put it in a very simple way. You will never fix your credit if you don't pull your credit report. This, this is just as practical as it comes. You want to fix your credit? The first thing you got to do is not go out here and start paying bills. It's not go out here and apply for credit cards. No. The very first thing you got to do is pull your credit report. And the reason you need to see your credit report is simple. Your credit report does not show you where you're going. Your credit report shows you where you've been and shows you where you are. Your credit report shows you where you've been and it shows you where you are. And the reality is you'll never get to the 700s until you look at that report and see that 450 and acknowledge that you got a 450. See, we're trying to, to, to live and move in 700 expectation without first acknowledging that we're in 450 territory. Make the example make sense to any area of your life. And this was Israel's challenge. See, Israel had a very hot and cold relationship with God. I'm getting in trouble here. This is, this is getting good to me. Israel had a very hot and cold relationship with God, meaning when they were on with him, they were on with him. When they believed in him, they believed in him. When they were mad with him, they were mad with him. Very often on, very hot and cold relationship with God. And in spite of all of that, God was always faithful to Israel. And the way he was always faithful to Israel was how when Israel decided to quit being hot and cold about where they were, when Israel decided to quit being back and forth about where they were and just being on and they decided to be honest about where we are, where they were, we're in the wilderness. We got here because of our disobedience. Let me give you some Bible for those of you that ain't caught this yet. 
Uh, we're in the wilderness. We're here because of our disobedience. We've sinned against you. When they started to acknowledge where they were, God always responded. God always responded. Can I help you? If you want some clarity about where you want to go, do me a favor. Try this this week. It's going to shock you. If you want God to give you some direction this week about where you need to go, the path you need to take. I want you to do this first thing. The first thing I want you to do is to be honest with God about where you are. Just just watch how this works. It's like magic. Before you ask God for direction, God, make it plain. Make it clear what I'm supposed to be doing. The first thing that I want you to do is say, listen, God, you know what I'm about to ask you because you know everything. But let me just be honest with you about where I am. I want to be married, but there's a part of me that likes to play games. Oh, I'm coming for y'all now. I want a brand new career with better money, but there's a lazy part of me that I just got to work through because some days I feel like working and some days I don't. I want to be debt free, but I got a spending demon and a sale demon that sometimes I just can't avoid. And I really need some help on my discipline. Yeah, see, we we don't. I really want a loving relationship, but I'm borderline selfish. And I don't really like to share. Even a cup of my coffee nonetheless share my life. And so I need you to help me with this selfishness. See, you you don't even realize that the key to unlocking direction is being honest about where you are. We're asking God to put, we're asking God to put blessings on top of stuff that we have not even acknowledged exist. Is, is this making sense to anybody? I feel like I'm talking in a black hole this morning. We're asking God to put blessings on top of stuff that we have not even admitted yet. God, bless my, give me a relationship. Give me a man. Give me a woman. Give me a new career. Bless my family. Give me this. Give me this. And you have yet to just pause and say, wait a minute. I know you know what I want. But can you please help me with my attitude before you send me some new friends? I want a better circle. You know my prayer, God, about my circle and having a better circle and a bigger circle. But before you send them to me, can you please just touch my attitude so that when you send them, I don't run them away? Can you please just bless my attitude? And my hot and cold nature so that when you send me the man I've been praying about or the woman I've been praying about, I don't run them away and waste your time. Y'all, 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 y'all don't like this, do you? Can, can, Can we can we make acknowledging where we are normal? How about we make acknowledging where we are normal? So that in that honesty, God then gives clarity and direction. Listen, put it in the comments right now. I'm making acknowledging where I am normal. Acknowledge is a big word. Let's simplify it. I'm making admitting where I am normal. Come on, put in the comments. I'm making, I'm going to make admitting where I am normal. Let me tell you the key to unlocking who you are and the key to unlocking your future. The key to unlocking who you are and unlocking your future is making where you are, admitting where you are normal. Every single day I, when, <clears throat> when I was praying for myself, because I, I haven't and I, I told you guys this and I'm going to admit it again. <clears throat> Last two weeks, I haven't even prayed for myself one day. I have not. I've literally been praying for you all for the last two weeks. And I'm in such a momentum of praying for other people that I think I'm going to do it for a third week. 
It ain't that pastor don't have needs. Pastor got needs too. Pastor got desires too. Pastor got all that stuff too. But I'm just in a season right now where I'm learning how to put the needs of other people when it comes to praying for them first and some other things when it comes to needs, I'm putting myself first. But I'm talking about when it comes to praying for people, putting their needs first. But let me tell you something. We got to make acknowledging where we are normal because I don't care how much I pray for you. I don't care how much I pray that God send you a man until you fix your attitude. You'll never get them. And if you get them, it'll never last. I don't care. I know y'all don't like this. How much I pray for God to send you that dream career that you've been praying over. Thank you, Sister Nikki. It's a, it's a joy to pray for you all. And I mean that. I don't care how much I pray for you to get that dream career and that dream opportunity or for you to open your business. It don't matter how much I pray. Until you learn how to manage your time better. Stop spending 12 hours a day on Facebook. And, and put 11 of those hours into your business plan. God can open up a door and or a door can open up for you, but the door going to be shut down because you're not working on where you are. You're not acknowledging where you are. And the reality is your prayer should not be right now. God, give me the business. Your prayer should be, God, I know the business is on the way because that's what I desire. Give me the tools to be able to sustain it when it comes. I want a man fix my attitude so when I get him, everything is good. I want a woman fix my hoe and ways so that when she come, I don't mess it up. <laughs> are y'all are y'all listening to me? Is this making sense? See, see, we got the order backwards. And Israel, we got it honest. Israel had the order backwards. Order Israel was always like, God, bring us out. Oh, God, bring us out. You know, I can't. I, 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 we hate to be in the wilderness. We, we're stuck in the wilderness and we don't have we, we're going to die in the wilderness and, and we're going to we're not going to make out of this. And, and that wasn't it. The key to getting out of the wilderness, the minute God heard their voice was the day that Israel then said, we the problem. We stubborn. We rebellious. We've sinned against you. When they started talking like that, guess what? God started answering. You want some clarity? Let me help y'all. Let me just be transparent. I was walking, not last week. The weather sucked last week. But the week before then, I was walking outside. It was when we had that nice weather. It was like in the 70s for like three days in a row. And um, I walked maybe like eight to 10 miles a day for like three days. And, um, and I was walking in. And I think it might have been that Tuesday it was because it was life study. Day. I'll never forget it. I was outside walking and, and God hit me with a revelation that rocked my world. And I ain't been right since. And that was the week right before I came on social media because um, I didn't know when I was going to come back. And then when when that happened, it really unlocked some stuff. And, and I was walking and God hit me with something. And I'm going to share this with you. And it was simple. He said, Zip, you'll be ready for what you want when you first acknowledge who you've been. You'll be ready for what you want when you first acknowledge where you are. You, y'all not catching this. You'll be ready for what's coming when you first acknowledge where you are right now. And see, that's the problem with things like just having these expectations and hopes, but completely ignoring the reality of your now. The fastest way to be healed from anything is to admit that you hurting from what it is that you're trying to be healed from. Right? And this is in a relationship sense, this is in a physical sense, disease. Fastest way to be healed from disease is to acknowledge that it's there. You can't ignore it. I ain't going to take my medicine. I believe in God. That kind of stuff. No, you don't ignore it. You acknowledge that it's there. You acknowledge what the doctor thinks they see. But you also acknowledge the fact that you serve a God that's a healer. And then you do things that show that you acknowledge where you are, i.e. you take your medicine, i.e. you stop eating rib ribs every day, i.e. You scale back on the alcohol. You see what I'm saying? In other words, you make tangible changes 
that reflect where you are. And that thing really rocked my world. And when I did that, then all of a sudden, I started to see life <laughs> in a like a totally different way. Because then I realized, watch this, that what I want, watch this, I'm not waiting on what I want. What I want is waiting on me. I want you to put this in the comments. This is going to freak you. I'm not waiting on what I want. What I want is really waiting on me. And that was Israel's problem. Israel's in the wilderness and they was waiting on God. But the reality is God was waiting on them. <laughs> and in your life, what you want, you ain't waiting on what you want. You think you are. And that's the problem. While you waiting on what you want, you ain't doing nothing to fix what you where you are. You ain't doing nothing to prepare yourself for what's coming. You ain't doing nothing to position yourself to what you. And I'm here to tell you, you ain't really waiting on what you want. If you are, you're doing it wrong. What you want is really waiting on you. This this is better. This this is better than y'all are saying amen to me. You, you, you not waiting on what you want. What you want is waiting on you. What you want is waiting on you to acknowledge where you are. I got to take this in because that that right there, uh, th these jewels I'll be dropped don't even be in my notes. Um, <laughs> this this stuff, this 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 God stuff, um, you know, waiting on what you want. What you want is waiting on you. It starts with you. You got to change. You have to acknowledge where you are and you have to be honest about where you are. But this 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 ignorance that we operate in, ignoring stuff. Oh, you know. This this point in the thing and, 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 and if we're not careful about not acknowledging where we are, we end up doing things like pointing the fingers and blaming other people. Well, if such and such did something, then I would have. Or if people would allow me to do stuff, then I would have. Or if people would act right, then I would have. And you missing the whole boat. It ain't got nothing to do with nobody else but you. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with nobody else but you. You don't have what you want because you focus on everybody else but you. And what you want ain't waiting on nobody else. It's waiting on you. That was Israel's problem. So if you want direction in your life, you got to accept where you are. Stop ignoring it. Accept where you've been. Acknowledge your role in stuff. See, we good at pointing the fingers. I would have if such and such did not do this to me. What did you do to them? I would be further if such and such didn't do this to me. What did you do to them? We're good at pointing the fingers. We struggle at acknowledging our part. We're good at placing the blame. We struggle at admitting our role in it. And Israel had the same problem. And so if you want direction, you got to accept where you are. Does that make sense? Let's go further. I'm almost there. I got three more, two more points and I'm done. Look at this. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse five through six. That's exactly right, Nick. It's accountability. 101. You accept that. You got to accept your part in it. And then it's only at that point of acceptance that then God begins to reveal direction. OK, you admitted your role in it. You admitted how your part in it. You admitted the part that you played. Now, this is how I'm going to heal you. And this is how I'm going to prepare you for what's coming. You want the dream relationship? Good. You've admitted your part in the relationship you had that failed, in the relationships you had that failed. You've admitted the things that you could have done better. You've admitted the things that the place ways you could have been better. Now that you've admitted that, now I'm going to position you to get you ready for what's coming. Got what I'm saying? You, got, you get how it works? Look at this. Second Chronicles chapter five, verse six. I'm sorry. It's chapter 15, verse five through six. NLT says this. During those dark times, I'm in verse five. It was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land. Nation, verse six, fought against nation and city against city.
for God was troubling them with every kind of problem. Can I help you? This is a bullet point I don't want you to forget. We're talking about getting out of the way today. This is a bullet point I don't want you to forget. I want you to record this. Are you ready? The preview to any good season is a dark season. This is enough to make you shout. The preview to any good season is a dark season. If you want to know whether or not a good season is coming, talk to me about the last dark season you've been in. Remember, darkness is a season. It's never permanent. Darkness is a season. Maybe your darkness is loneliness. Maybe your darkness is dissatisfaction with your job. Maybe your darkness is this health challenge you can't kick. Maybe your darkness is this habit that you can't be. But let me tell you something. The preview to any good season is a dark one. Dark seasons are not permanent. Dark seasons are necessary for growth. Dark seasons position you to receive. Dark seasons position you to grow. They position you to change. They prepare you for new days. You want to grow, you need to go through a dark season. Some of the greatest growth that I've experienced in my life personally have come right after some of the darkest seasons I've ever had in my life. You want to grow? Go through a dark season. If you want to change, go through a dark season. Now, let me tell you what's dangerous about going through a dark season and not embracing the power of a dark season. If you go through a dark season and you don't accept the lessons in the dark season, you end up in cycles of dysfunction. Are y'all listening to the old man? If you go through a dark season and you don't accept the lessons that the dark season is trying to teach you, this is how you end up in cycles of dysfunction. People, are in cycles of dysfunction in their lives because they have gone through dark seasons and ignored the lessons. Never go through a dark season without tuning into the lessons the dark season is trying to teach you. Because when you tune in to the lessons that the dark season is trying to teach you, then you find yourself not repeating cycles of dysfunction. It's like dating five people and, and, and all five of the relationships in the same way. I'm gonna offend some of y'all. If you have dated five people and all five of the relationships have ended the same exact way, it is a good chance that in relationships one through four, there were seasons of darkness where you miss lessons that had you applied the lesson, you would not have repeated the failure. I feel like I'm talking too heavy for y'all. I guarantee you that if you would have looked, if you have five relationships that all in the same exact way, if you would have looked in relation when it ended the first time with the first relationship, if you would have examined yourself and examined the lessons that you should have learned you could have avoided repeating that four more times. See, we end up in repetitive cycles of dysfunction because we ignore the lessons that darkness tries to teach us. We end up ignoring the lessons that failures try to teach us. And when you do, you end up repeating the foolishness over and over and over and over again. So darkness is necessary for growth. Darkness is necessary for change. You want to change? You got to embrace it. And darkness is necessary for your new day. Think about it. Think about the solstice. Think about the earth spinning on its axis. Think about the whole, I mean, this is science 101. Think about how the, the days change. And it goes from night to day and day to night. There is... No 12.01 a.m. without an 11.59 p.m. 
this is this is like completely over y'all's head. Some of y'all, by the time you catch that revelation, it's going to set you on fire. Did you hear what I said? There is no 12.01 a.m. without an 11.59 p.m. Are y'all listening to me? Pastor, what you getting at? I still don't get it. There is no brand new day without the day before reaching its darkest season. The darkest time of any day is 1159. And the reality is, if your change has not come or your day has not changed, it's not dark enough. Man, I'm about to get up and run around my house. Did you, did you, let me say this again, because y'all not listening to me. If, you're, if, if change has not come in your life, or if your day has not changed in your life, your season has not changed in your life, it's not dark enough yet. And see, what happens is we're expected, we want 12.01 a.m., but in our lives, our clocks are really just on 10 p.m. That's, I know that it's like flying over y'all's head. Some of y'all, now y'all starting to catch this. Nah, nah, right, right, yeah. See, you want God to give you a new day, but sometimes God is saying it ain't dark enough. I got to make the day a little bit darker where you are so that when the new day comes, I'm assured that you've learned every lesson that you need to learn. I want you to put this in the comments. You're going to be the smartest person on your job tomorrow. I want you to put this in the comments. 12.01 a.m. is coming. When I get through 11.59 p.m. It's a lot. I want you to type it. I'm typing again, Sister Nick. 12.01 a.m. is coming when I learn from 11.59 p.m. I hate to break the news to you, but many of you want a new day. You want a 12.01 experience, but the clock is just saying 8 p.m. And the reason it's just saying 8 p.m., it's because you ain't learned from the dark seasons that you're in. Let me tell you what makes the clock, what, what, what makes it. Yeah, it's a whole word. Show. They, they don't like this. Let me tell you what makes the, the clock move much slower. You want to you want to know what makes 1159 take longer to get here? Because see. Kids and I were laughing because it was it was seven something the other day and it was still light outside because of the time change. And so now it stays lighter later, right? Because we've sprung forward. So it stays lighter later. And um, and so I was I was thinking about this message. And, and when about eight o'clock hit, it was dark outside. Check this out. Y'all ready? 8 p.m. looks just like 11.59 p.m. Man, I'm about to get up and just run. I'm going to just run. And, and y'all going to talk about me. If I do this, but I'm about to just literally get up and just start running in my house. I'm going to say this again. 8 p.m. looks just like 11.59 p.m. There is no difference. They look the same. It's the same darkness. Both of the same types of darkness propel the street lights to come on. It's the same darkness. Here's the difference. 11.59 p.m. darkness is a much deeper, more mature darkness than an 8 p.m. darkness. Watch. As we begin to mature in darkness, we get closer to the new day. I quit. Did y'all, did y'all, y'all, I quit. This is, 
this is like it's flying over y'all's heads. I I, I, I want to just quit the message right now. Did y'all hear what I said? As we begin to mature in darkness, we begin to mature into a new day. And the reality is some of y'all stuck at eight o'clock because you still complaining that it's eight o'clock. You stuck at 8 p.m. because you still complaining about it being 8 p.m. Y'all not getting that this and that. Let me put it in money uh, terms. You still complaining about being broke. You, you still ain't got no money because you're still complaining about being broke. You stuck at 8 p.m. If you want to get out of 8 p.m. and mature to 1159, right before the brink of a 1201 new day, you got to do something about 8 p.m. Stop complaining about where you are, acknowledge where you are, and start making changes so you can prepare for the 1201 experience. Because at the end of the day, 8 p.m. and 11.59 p.m. look identical. But the difference is one has matured in darkness. Now, they look identical. I, I, man, I feel like preaching for real. They look identical, but let's take this a step further. You look at them and they look the same. But let me see how many people will witness to this. If you step outside at eight o'clock, how eight o'clock feels is not how 11.59 feels. Some, some of y'all not going to get this. If you go outside at 8 o'clock, it just, yeah, it's dark like 11.59, but it, it feels different. It's a it's an immature, it's a young darkness. It, it feels different. But if you, say, just fall asleep and you wake up at, say, 11.30, and you decide to go out, you're going to let your, you're going to take your dog out. You're going to walk the dog around your neighborhood. If you got a neighborhood, you can walk around at midnight. Or you're going to just, you know, walk to the car. You forgot something. You need to go walk to the car. When you go outside at 1159, it looks like a, but it feels different. Pastor, what you getting at? When you mature in dark spaces, when you mature in dark seasons, the darkness might look the same, but it's going to feel different. I'm, about to, I'm just about to quit the message. Are y'all listening to me? This is just, this is heavy. When you mature in dark, Nikki, I'm just, this is a whole book. When you mature in darkness, it looks the same, but it feels different. It feels different. See, the reason it feels different is because you matured through your seasons of darkness. It's like, it's like, it's like being disappointed. When you matured through seasons of disappointment, watch this. When you have matured through seasons of disappointment, when new disappointment comes, it's the same disappointment but it feels different. It looks the same, but it feels different because of where you are. I, I just, man, as we mature in dark seasons, we prepare for the 12.01 a.m. experience that's coming. And so let me tell you what my prayer for all of you are that's on this call right now. Are you are y'all inviting people? 
If you ain't invited nobody, you better hurry up and tell them they got eight more minutes to catch this last bullet point. Let me tell you what my prayer is for all of you this week. My prayer is that God matures you at 8 p.m. My prayer is that he in your life, catch the analogy, in your life, matures you at 8 p.m. So that if you have to endure 8, 8 to 9, that's 1, 9 to 10, 9, 10, 11. If you have to endure three hours and 59 minutes of darkness in your life. If you have to endure three hours and 59 minutes of darkness in your life, that by the time you get to 1159, even if you've had to endure three hours and 59 minutes of dark, it does not feel the same because you have matured in the process. Israel stayed stuck in the dark because they treated 1159 like 8 p.m. It's the same looking darkness, but it's not the same. Because, baby, when you've been disappointed at 8 p.m., it's fresh. It's hard. It's difficult to come up, get over. It's new to you. It's raw to you. But when you've been disappointed at 11.50 p.m., it's the same disappointment. But you got a different kind of feeling about it because you've been there, done that, overcame it, grew through it. And you know that you had hours to grow and grow and grow and that your new day is coming. All you got to do is get out your own way. See, we get in the way. When we are so hard on ourselves, we get in the way. When we start treating 11.50 8 p.m. like 8 o'clock p.m., it ain't the same. Well, Pastor, some of you, if you're a nerd like me, and this is speaking to your nerdness, some of you should then be saying, okay, Pastor, then how do I know what time of day it is? I'm in a dark season, but how do I know if it's 8 o'clock or it's 11.50 p.m.? How do I know? It's a simple answer. How long have you been going through what you're going through? Because let me tell you something about the time. Isn't it funny how the time just goes slower and slower when you begin to really dwell on what it is you're dealing with? Isn't it something how time seems to just be moving at a snail's pace when you really dwelling and bugging on where it is that you are right now? I can tell you where you are, what season and what time you are in in your life by how long you've been there. If the challenge just started yesterday, it's probably just eight o'clock. Man, listen to me. If the stuff you're struggling with just started yesterday, it's probably just eight o'clock. But if you have been in a battle for your sanity for years, And you're still battling your sanity for years. It ain't 1159, but let me tell you something. It ain't eight o'clock either. You've been in this thing for a minute. And so what you got to realize is that if I've been battling for my sanity for three, for five years in a situation and it ain't getting no better, then maybe time is moving slowly towards 1201. Because I ain't embraced the dark season that I'm in. Good God from Zion. So if you want to come out of the dark season that you're in. You got to acknowledge the season that you're in. You got to be honest about it. So you can mature through your darkness. And when you mature in dark seasons, the darkness will look the same. New disappointment will look the same. New hurt will look the same. New pain will look the same. But it's going to feel a whole lot different. Let me tell you something. 
when I'm hurt today versus when I was hurt years ago, in many ways, it's been some situations where it was the same. But I'm here to tell you, growth will help you get to a point where it just don't feel the same. It might look the same, but it don't feel the same. And if it feels the same, then that means you ain't growing. If the way you got hurt today was the same way you were, you got hurt five years ago and it feels the exact same, you didn't grow in your dark season. Is this making sense to anybody? Look at this. Wow. Wow. Look at this. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse seven. Last verse, last bullet points. I'm done. Look at this. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse seven. New Living Translation says, but as for you, be strong and courageous for your work will be rewarded. But as for you, be strong and courageous for your work will be rewarded. Look at this. Things always worked out for Israel when they moved out of the way. Period. The minute they acknowledged where they were, we walked through that. The minute they accepted the pain that they were in, the minute they accepted their role in being where they are, the minute they, they accepted the responsibility and their part and the part they played for being where they were, was the minute that as they began to move out of the way that God came through for Israel. Now, you have to learn how to release the grip you have on your life. Type this in the comments now. You have to learn how to release the grip you have on your life. Um, wow, I didn't even plan this. That's how God works. Watch this. And uh, this is really, um, I've, I've got a similar analogy that's coming on my YouTube channel. I'll be launching that real soon. Similar analogy, but just with something different. I'm at my kid's workstation. I'm at my kid's workstation. And so I've got a pencil in my hand. You have to learn how to release the grip you have on your life. If you want God to do some things, part of getting out of the way is releasing your own grip. Because some of us have a grip, a death grip on our lives that's so powerful that even if God wanted to bless you, he can't bless you because you ain't releasing the grip on your life. I'm sitting here uh, and I just remembered I had this here when I was cleaning some stuff up, moving some things out of the way to, to, to get in this space. But my kids work in here. Uh, and um, Giselle's got a pencil over here and uh, it's, it's a pencil. I'm just holding the pencil. But this this pencil for many of you represents the very thing that you want in your life. And as you can see, I've got the pencil in my hand. I'm scrolling. Um, I'm clicking. I'm able to type. I can do a lot of stuff with this pencil. Where am I? I can do a lot of stuff with this pencil in my hands. Right. I can. Um, you know, I can type and I have not dropped the pencil. Pencils in my hand and I can do all of this stuff with, with pencil in my hand because it's mine. This is what I want. And because I am so comfortable with it and so familiar with it, I begin to just, you know, sometimes and I even work like this, too. Um, I'll find myself typing, but I'm back and forth between notes and writing and notes and emails and notes, whatever. So. It's just too, you know, to me, it just feels too tedious to put the pencil down tight, pick it up right, or put the pen down tight, pick it up right, right? Y'all get that. Um, so I'll just hold on to the pencil and I'll just type and keep the pencil in my hand, just whatever. This 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 is just like many of the things you desire in your life. And you got a depth death grip on it, and you're comfortable with it, and you can maneuver with it, and you can spin it around, and you can do all of this stuff with it. And it, you, you're just so comfortable to it because you're so used to it. And this is so common to you, whatever. Here's the problem. I looked over here and Giselle got a whole bag of pencils. That have not even been sharpened. And um, many of you are so busy holding on to one pencil. 
that the grip you have on that one thing in your life is keeping you from getting a handful of stuff that ain't even been touched yet. Maybe this isn't making sense to anybody. This is the career that you've been working for the last 15 years. This is the job you're comfortable with because it gives you benefits. You got a pension connected to it. You've got seniority connected to it. And this is all you know. This is starting your own business. This is the dream job that you are afraid to go after. That's got stuff in it that ain't been touched. Y'all not catching the analogy. I'm going to keep going till y'all catch it. This is the relationship you want so bad. This, this is the relationship you want so bad that you have a death grip on, that you are determined to have and you're going to have it. Come hell or high water, you're going to get what you want, who you want, how you want, them. you're going to get it. This, this, is, this, is, this is the relationship. This is the harvest of folks that's in line to be with somebody like you that wants to accept every quality you bring into the table. And while this pencil was sharpened and it worked for a season, maybe, just maybe, there's a pencil over here that works just as good or better as, as this one. Now, y'all not, y'all missing this. It don't mean that you might not be called to this pencil. It don't mean this, but watch this. We'll never know if you've been called to this pencil until you let it go. I, I quit. I don't, I don't want to teach anymore. I want to pray. Because <laughs> are y'all listening to me? I'm trying not to scream at y'all. This might be your dream, right? And it might very well work out. But guess what, baby? Sometimes you got to test if this is the right pencil by putting it down. I'm about to run. Like, this thing is touching me. And I, I feel like the older I get, the weaker I get. And it might be my kid. Y'all see my eyes starting to, to get a little red? It might just be the kid thing. You know, I'm, I'm watching Giselle. She placed in state. She won first place in state on the, the balance beam and her team won state. And and I'm sitting over there catching myself with tears. Like and I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm officially an old man. Because <laughs> Now, it don't take a lot for me to tear up. So if y'all see some tears coming out of my face, past is good. This I promise you I am. But let me tell you something. This thing is real right here. This might very well be. This very well might be the relationship that belongs to you. But let me tell you something. Sometimes you got to let it go. Sometimes you got to put it down so that you can see if it's that one or if it's this one. And Israel had that challenge. Let me say this to you. I want you to type this in the comments right now. Things will always work out for you when you move out of the way. Things will always work out for you when you get, listen to me, out of the way. Is this, is this making sense? Pastors getting filled up because I, I've lived this. This, this ain't something... You know, this ain't something that I just wrote about. This is something I've lived. Things work out for you when you move out of the way.
are, are y'all listening to me? I'm laughing at myself because I claim I'm getting old and I'm just getting soft. Somebody, somebody put in the comments said, Pastor, you're getting soft. I might be. <laughs> you know, the daddy in me might just be, my kids might just be working on me. Let me tell you something. Things work when you move. Just get out of the way. You can still have everything you desire, but you can't receive it till you let go of it. Are y'all listening to Pastor? Pastor's good. Yeah, it ain't tears of pain. This is tears of excitement because <laughs> I've been there. Look, you can still have everything you desire, but you can't receive it till you let go of it. Pastor, I just want that pencil. Pastor, I just want that, that career. I just want that relationship. I just want that person. I just want that man. I get it. And it wants you too. It wants you too. But listen to me. You can still have everything you desire, but you can't receive it until you let go. See, and this is the confusion. Yes, pastor's good. Those were pure tears of joy. Um, you, this is the confusion behind letting go and letting God. See, we say things like, um, let go and let God, but we don't realize that when you let go and let God, you ain't letting go of what you want. It means you are releasing your effort with what you want. Are y'all listening to me? See, when you say I'm letting, and we say in the church, I'm going to let go and let God. Do you realize what you're really saying? When you say I'm going to let go and let God, you ain't saying that you quit on what you letting go of. You didn't quit. What you're saying is I'm taking my hand off the grip. God, it's got to happen like this. It's got to be this way. It's got to be in this direction. I'm taking my hands off the grip. I'm letting go. And I'm releasing my effort. And if that's the pencil you want me to have, you're going to make it happen. And I'll pick the pencil right back up. And I'm going to go on. And I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing. And if that ain't the pencil that you want me to have, The earth is the Lord's. See, if we was at rehab, I'd be screaming in that mic right now. If this ain't the pencil you want me to have, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that, which means he can do exceedingly and abundantly. Y'all, y'all not catching this. You worried about one thing. He can do exceed. You worried about one job. He can do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that you can ask or think. Y'all catch this revelation. Letting go and letting God says either way. I'm going to have a pencil. I just don't know which one it's going to be. And that's all right. This is the one I'm comfortable with. This is the career I'm comfortable with. But I'm going to let it go. Because I really feel like this one. And if he brings me back to it, great. I got it. If not, the earth is the Lord's. See? We, we, we've got to understand, we have to understand that, that battles, our battles belong to God, but the victory belongs to you. It ain't your job to figure out how to write with this thing. It ain't your job to figure out how to hold this thing and hold on to these things that you, you do. It's not. Your job is to literally let this go and just say, God, I know you got 
many pencils out here, many careers, many relations. I know you, I cannot, I cannot continue to paint myself holding on to something. When if I just release it and trust, thank you for that, because that's powerful. And just trust the process that everything I desire still wants me. Everything I want still wants me. And that, my friends, is letting go. When I let go, y'all notice I didn't throw the, the, the pencil in the trash can. I set it right here. I can see the pencil. It's right in my view. It's right in my view, Sandy. It ain't going nowhere. The pencil's still there. The pencil still belongs to me. But what I don't know is the process between me and getting that pencil again. Your job ain't to figure out the how. Your job is not to understand the how. Your job is just to know that whatever the what is, is still on the way. Everything you desire still wants you. Everything you want still wants you. Everything you believe in, watch, still believes in you. Are y'all listening to me? I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to stop here. I got a few more points, but this is a good time to pray. Um. Wow. This bless anybody today? You can tell it bless me. This bless anybody today? The battle don't belong to you. The battle belongs to God. The victory belongs to you. So your job right now is to put the pencil down and prepare for it. You comfortable with this pencil? Put it down and prepare for the pencil that's coming. Loosen your hands up. Loosen your grip. And prepare for the pencil that's coming. Prepare for the career that's coming. Prepare for the relationship that's coming. You calling this a lonely season. I'm calling this a preparation season. You calling this a lonely season because you in the bed by yourself. I'm calling this a preparation season so that when somebody else ends up in your bed, you know how to handle them this time. Y'all not listening to me. See, most people want a circumstance to change so their belief can change. But you got to change your belief regardless of your circumstance. No more nuggets because I'm dropping nuggets on y'all. Y'all don't want. Did y'all hear what I said? Most people want a circumstance to change so they can change what they believe. But I'm here to tell you, you got to change what you believe before your circumstance changes. If what you want, if you want what you want to change, you got to change how you believe about it first. See, most of us, just, we want the circumstance change. We want the obstacles to change. And then if the obstacles change, we change how we believe. doesn't work that way. It actually has to work backwards. Stop waiting on your circumstance to change before you change how you believe. Change how you believe, and then what you want will change. You got to change how you believe before your circumstances change. All right, I'm done. This bless anybody today. I'm going back to watch this replay myself. Get out of your own way. I want you to type your prayer request in the comments right now. Come on, quickly. Quickly. As, as I'm talking to you, just imagine a slow organ playing in the back. As you're typing your prayer request in the comments, I want to pray for you. Right now, I want to pray for you all week, but I want to challenge you as you're thinking about what to pray for. I even want you to be intentional about what you type in the comments, because hopefully what I said today has even challenged you to think about what you pray for. See, instead of praying and saying, God, send me a career, maybe your prayer request should be, God, make me faithful where I am. Make me faithful where I am. Instead of your prayer being God, fix other people so that we can get along better. Maybe your prayer should be, God, prepare me to be the best me I can be. You got to get out of your own way. 
the only person that's hindering what's coming into your life is you. Gosh, man, man, man. The only thing that's hindering what's coming into your life is you. I hope that after today, the next time you hear let go and let God, the first thing you think about is this. When you let it go, you can still have it. But you let go of the process to getting it. You, you let go of the stress that comes with it. See, I've discovered, I've discovered that when you hold on to it, when you hold on to what it is that you really want, when you hold on to what it is that you really desire, that brings with it more stress and anxiety. Because you're focused on the outcome. But you don't realize that letting go doesn't mean you're not without it. Letting go means you release the process of receiving it. And you make yourself open to receiving it by getting rid of the effort. While you're typing your prayer request, let me tell you what this is. This is really what I call a sweatless victory. A sweatless victory is when you winning, watch, when you are winning and you not even trying. Come on, good, I see the prayer request y'all. I'm not ignoring you. The, 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 the spirit is still speaking through me and I'm just trying to get these last points out as I hear him. A sweatless victory, keep typing your request. A sweatless victory is simply winning without the effort. And some of you should be tired right now from how hard you've been working. I want to say this. I, I want to say this. It could be that maybe you haven't received it because you're trying too hard. You're trying too hard. You got to get out of your own way. You've got to let go so you can position yourself to receive. I got to go, y'all. I got to run. I've got to run. Let's pray right now as a sign, a symbol of faith. I want you to connect your hands right now while I feel the presence of the Lord truly moving. I want you to connect your hands like this as a sign of faith. Because yes, Sister Sandy, I am. My, that's going to be my my prayer is that God helps you all, helps all of us. Let's put us all in the boat. Helps all of us this week to just learn how to let it go. Let go. You want it. Let go. You desire it. Let go. You want the, the business. Let go of it. Let go of it. You didn't quit. You let go. Let go. Let it go. And when you let go, you give up the resistance with it. You give up the effort and the energy with it. And all of a sudden, in your letting go, you're going to find yourself receiving. Let go. Let it go. Let it go, Zion. Let it go. You're not going to lose it. Let it go. Pastor, but if I let go, it's not going to happen for me. It's not going to. I'm going to lose. You're not going to lose it. Everything you want still wants you. Everything you desire still desires you. Let it go. Let, let it go so you can receive. Let's pray. Wow. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you today <clears throat> for a powerful word, a powerful moment that we are experiencing right now in you. I pray now, God, that you would, through this word, empower somebody with the strength to let go. God, I'm not praying for anything else. You've seen the prayer requests of your people. Answer the prayers of your people. But more than that, God, I need you this week to help your people realize the impact of letting go. Help us, God, to understand that when we let go, we didn't quit. That when we let go, we did not give up. When we let go, we just released our own effort. And we've handed it over to the one who is able to make everything possible. We've handed it over to the one 
who is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we can ask or think. Right now, God, over these airwaves, <clears throat> for everybody that's tuned in live, even for those people that are catching the replay, I pray right now a special prayer of strength for your people to have the ability to let it go. Help them to let go so they can receive. Help us to let go so that we can walk into. Help us to let go so that we can then receive everything that we desire in our lives and more. We know you don't want to just bless us, but we know you want to do exceeding and abundant above all that we could ever ask or think. Give us the strength to let go so we can receive. And we'll continue to bless you. Give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to type in the comments right now. It is so. Wow. It is so. It is so. Come on. It is so. Type it in the comments right now. It is so. It is so. It is so. It is so. If you prayed that prayer, if you want God to help you with getting out of your own way this week, I want you to type it in the comments. It is so. I'm here to tell you, God's going to help some of you get out of your own way this week. The only person that's been stopping the manifestation of your expectation is you. Every time you put your hands in it, it gets worse. Every time you put your hands in it, it, it goes left. And God is saying a word that I need you to remember this week. Surrender. Give up. You got to give up so you can receive. Give up. Just give up. Give it up. Give it up. When you surrender, you're not giving up. You're giving it up. When you surrender, you're not giving up. You're giving it up. When you surrender, you're not giving up. You are giving it up. Give it up. Give it up so that you can receive. Listen, if anybody wants to be saved today, if anybody wants to dedicate their life to Christ, if anybody wants to join this church, I wanna challenge you right now. Maybe you're hearing this message and you've been challenged to give up and surrender today. I want you to surrender your will for God's will. And what you're gonna discover is that your will looks just like God's will. That's gonna to be too much for y'all. I don't have time to explain it, but yeah, when you give up your will, you find out that your will looks just like his will. And so today, maybe you need to, 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 to dedicate your life to Christ. You want to be saved. Romans 10 and 9 tells us that if we confess with our mouths, if we believe with our hearts that Jesus Christ is who he is, did what he did for us. We are saved. It's that simple. Salvation is a matter of confession. And God wants to save you. But you've got to get out of the way. If you want to be saved today. I want you to pray this prayer of faith with me. I want you to pray this prayer of faith with me right where you are. Pull the car over. Put the food in the fork down. If you're laying down, sit up because I want you to fully receive this prayer and repeat this prayer. And God wants to save you right where you are. You want to be saved? Say this with me. I'm a sinner. I'm not perfect. I've made some mistakes. I have some flaws. And I even have some failures. But I do believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, lived on this earth in human form, just like I'm living. Yet he suffered, bled, and died on the cross. And three days later, rose again for my sins. Because he lives, I can live and I am saved. My friends, if you prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the royal family of Jesus Christ. You have dedicated your life to Christ. You have made the most important decision of your life. And I want to welcome you to the, the, the royal family of Jesus Christ. Now, I need you to find your church home somewhere. I don't care where. Find your, let me take that back. I do care where. Find your church on where you can grow, where you can serve, where you can give, where the word is taught in a way that you understand, where the word is taught in a way where you can easily apply it to your life and become everything you've been called to be. Find that church home and be a part of that ministry and dedicate your time, talent, and treasure to that church. 
Maybe rehab's the place for you. Maybe you like this ministry and this church has been the place that's been a blessing to you. You don't even live in the tribe. Maybe you live in some faraway state or nation and you want to be a part of our ministry. We would love to welcome you to the Rehab Christian Center. I think COVID has taught us you don't even have to be near a church to be a part of a church. That's a different message for a different day. And that theology is going to shake a lot of people up, but it's coming. You don't even have to be near a church to be a part of a church, to be a part of the body of Christ. And so maybe this ministry has blessed you from wherever you are, Atlanta, Miami, New York, California, wherever you are. I want to challenge you. If you want to be a part of our ministry, you should see moderators on the screen now that are challenging you to be a part of our church. I would love to welcome you to the Rehab Christian Center. Even if you're a long distance member, even if you're a virtual member, I would love to welcome you to a church where you can dedicate your time, talent, and treasure. We're a giving church. We believe in empowering the people around us, the communities around us. We believe in sowing into the community, sowing so that we can bless the communities around us. But we also believe in a practical word that you can apply to your life so that your life begins to make sense. If you want to be a part of this ministry, you should see moderators on the screen. Just simply like their comment. And uh, these awesome people will reach out to you, get some information from you. And we would love to have you be a part of our ministry. All right. Are you listening to me? Um, I, I am just um, I'm just filled up right now. I, there's nothing wrong with pastor. I promise y'all there's, there's nothing wrong with pastor. So don't trip. I'm good. But you have moments sometimes where you have encounters with God where it literally creates a somber mood. And pastor's in a very somber space right now because today we heard from heaven. I don't know if y'all realize it or not, but today we heard from heaven. And um, I want to challenge you where you are to be a blessing to our ministry. All right. You should see the giving information on the screen. But give me just two minutes to challenge you to be a blessing to our ministry today. If this message has blessed you, if this word has blessed you, I want to challenge you to give. You can give one of three ways via Cash App, dollar sign, Rehab CC, give. That's dollar sign, Rehab CC, give. You can give through our website, www dot rehabcc.org. That's www.rehabcc.org. Or you can get through cell phone by texting Rehab Works to 88202 on your cell phone. Grab your cell phone, text Rehab Works to 88202 and write to your cell phone. You'll see prompts, follow the prompts, and you can give right from there. All right. Again, the three ways to give are on the screen. Um, cash app, dollar sign, rehabcc, give. Um, website www.rehabcc.org uh, and also um, right from your cell phone text rehab works to 88202 and um, right from um, your phone um, you will see the prompts and you can be a blessing to us for right there uh, many of you give uh, to us through givelify you can also get find us on give givelify at the rehab christian center as well but i want to challenge you to give today i hope this message bless you the way it blessed me I hope this message empowered you the way it empowered me. Um, do me a favor. I want you to share this video. I want you to fill it up with hearts. If you have not liked this video, um, regardless of the medium that you're on, I want you to like this video. I want you to love this video. I need you to share this video. I need you to share this video with somebody. Tell them to tune in and watch the replay. Um, and then finally, I want to see you Tuesday night, 7.08 p.m. I'm right here at the Rehab Christian Center. We're going to be on part four of the series that we've been doing on the power of being misunderstood. And um, I promise you this message is going to bless you on Tuesday in a special way. Listen, you need to share today's video with somebody. Today's video is going to bless somebody's life. Today's video is going to change somebody's perspective. And it's going to start with you witnessing to them. All right, would you do that for me? And I promise God will bless you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Listen, I love all of you. I love you like a fat kid loves Dairy Queen. I want you to enjoy your, your day to day. Enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy your time off. Use some of this, this wonderful day to reflect on the word, to reflect on your week that's ahead, to reflect on the things you need to let go so that you can be positioned to win like you've never won before. All right. Pastor loves you. I'm praying for you. Remember, I'm praying for you this week, not even praying for myself. Y'all do me a favor. Pray for me. And I promise you, I can't wait to see you on Tuesday night. All right. I love you. Praying for you and your family. Peace and blessings. Thank you for watching the Rehab Christian Center Live Experience. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, 
and you would like to be a blessing to our leader, Dr. Zeb Tally III, you can sow a seed into his ministry by cash app and dollar sign, Pastor ZT3. It is our prayer that this message of hope encouraged, enlightened, and empowered you to be better. Please tune in Tuesday at 7.08 p.m. for our Life Study experience. And as always, be blessed and have a wonderful week.